You're listening to Errol Parker and Clancy Overall, editors of the Batuta Advocate on Desert Rock FM. Welcome back to the Batuta Advocate Radio Show, recording live here in downtown Batuta. You're joined by myself, Clancy Overall, and of course, Errol Parker, editor at large. Morning, Errol. Good morning, Clancy. It's a great day up here in the Diamantina. We had a bit of rain this morning. Good for the wheat farmers, good for the cotton farmers. Not so good for uh, the yuppies who are on their way to the uh, farmer's market, but, you know, can't please everyone with the weather, can you? No, you can't. You can't. And um, today's guest has been described as the hardest working man in rock and roll and several other uh, industries, stage, music, all kinds of stuff like that. A bit of VO work there. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining us, Paul Field. <laughs> G'day. It's great to be here, guys. You've got a storied career, and we'll go over a lot of it today. Yeah. Can you take us back to where it started, when you first picked up an instrument, when you first grabbed a microphone? Yeah, I'm, I'm the middle of seven children, right. so that, mm. that's already, um, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, I'm into therapy already. And uh, – <laughs> It's uh, but it was great. A great family, four boys, three girls. Mum was music mad. She, and we grew up in the '60s, you know. So she used to say, uh, learning to play an instrument is as important as learning to read and write. Yeah. And also, seriously, it sounds like I grew up in the Great Depression, but <laughs> she would literally play the piano to us, the mob of us, to calm us down, yeah. to get us focused, and da da da. And Von Trapp stuff going on yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah, Von uh, State Police, you know, like just to calm us down and get us focused, you know. But it was good, and, and and it gave us. And she loved music, so she would play stuff on the the stereo. We exposed to lots of forms of music, and on Dad's side. Dad couldn't play a note but loved music. But his mother and dad were from Cobar, northwest New South yeah. Wales, and they owned a pub up there and ran it, the Great Western. And my grandmother Kathleen would accompany on piano the silent movies in Cobar. Really? So, yeah, okay. And then on mum's side, there was Quinny Paul, who's an old, old Tivoli theatre performer. So it's kind of in the DNA. But, yeah, we were encouraged and, to play music. And, and dad also who was a pharmacist and in the western suburbs. We grew up in, in the, the, around Blacktown. And he eventually became a, a counsellor, a drug counsellor, dispense methadone, all that kind of stuff. And he learned from that that were good kids from good families just went off the rails. Yeah. And the message he got from that was, if you're into something and you dig it, just go with it. Yep. And so, because we love music, he encouraged us. And yep. we were teenagers where the last three of us, I was born May 61, Johnny May 62, and Anthony May 63. So right. very close. Irish like, triplets. Irish. Yeah, yeah. That's a, <laughs> that's a good expression. Yeah. And, uh, I, and again, I don't know how mum did that. God help us, you know, like looking after us. And that's but, the last hurrah, the youngest Where there's three. a will, there's a way, I guess. Yeah, I and we're rat bags too, you know. Like So anyway, and so when we're into music, it encourages. So at 17, for whatever reason, even though we're close together, I was booking us into pubs and clubs in the cross. Yeah, right. And we just thought nothing different of that, you know, and, and, and so we're very lucky to get into it. And, yeah, it, it, it was great. We The cockroaches started playing in high school for other high school kids. Then when they went to uni, we started playing the uni balls and then yep. – and again, in Sydney in those days, and Australia, every pub was a venue. Yeah. So we, we kind of rode the last wave of the pub rock era in. Yeah. And we knew how to good, put on a good show, you know. We just had fun. Yeah. And it, it was kind of infectious. So we did that for years and years, put out independent singles, and but we had built up a bloody huge following. Yeah. And so by the time our first album came out in 1987, early 87, it debuted in the Sydney charts at number two. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. And these are the days when not every album came out on CD and the record company said, um, yeah, we might put this out on CD. Yeah. So, <laughs> and so, that was just off the back of everyone having seen you before. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And live. We, yeah, yeah. And we, yeah, we've got an album coming out. We just flogged it, you know. Yeah, and yeah. we would pay, play six or seven nights a week. Yeah. You know, and sometimes a few, night, a few gigs per night. Yeah. You know, the uni balls where, like, we do a regular gig, say, at the Samuel Girl there in the North Shore. Then there'd be like, you know, John's college gig and then an Andrew's college gig, one in the morning and three in the morning. And, yeah. <laughs> and one of those morning. early ones, uh, we come on at one in the morning and the band that followed us because they just come over from Perth was in excess. Right. Because like, they just yeah. come over, had one yeah. single out. And even then, actually, I remember we said, God, look at that guy. And he had leather pants. Who in Australia had leather pants yeah, in those yeah, days? Yeah, yeah, And he, like, Mike Hutchins was just a star from the word go. Yeah. But, Back to the era, it was great. And we learned our craft that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, learned your trade, learn what worked. 
Yeah, so it was a great era. So you do you reckon the um, the old man's job as a you know in, in the drug and alcohol counselling and yeah. method, do you reckon that's what kept the cockroaches on the straight and narrow? Because you guys do have a reputation for being in the middle of that scene, but yeah. staying straight. No, yeah, yeah, staying straight. I wouldn't say square, but staying straight. Yeah, square. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but it's absolutely absolutely true. Because yeah. seriously, Dad would go out to people who had overdosed. Right. Yeah. yeah. We had customers that come. We all worked in the shop. Right. Yeah. You know, poor people coming in who were just off their head, yeah. and and he'd explain what they're doing and what's happened to them. So you're right, we're playing in the cross and we got offered everything, right? Yeah. And to us, like, we still love our grog and all that kind of stuff, but yeah. it held no allure, yeah, right? Yeah. And in fact, I tell you, my, our eldest brother, Patrick, he's, 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 he loves music but wasn't in the band. And we're up the cross paying and this guy came backstage with literally with a bag yeah. of everything. An arsenal. <laughs> yeah, an, an arsenal. Like the, the Keith Richards kit, yeah. right, you know, and just said, hey, guys, right. And Patrick went. A lazy Susan of drugs. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. There's a yeah. good description. And Patrick said, hey, mate, are you, are you a drug dealer? And he laughed and went, I guess I am. He said, boy, have you come to the wrong place. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, just, it just, yeah. we just didn't get into it. Lucky yeah. us. Yeah. That way down to NXS. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do you find with those, uh, you know, the, the reputation that rock music has, mm. or just, you know, yeah, music popular, musicians, rock stars yeah. for partying, what do you think that is? Do you think that's more of the uh, a personality thing of the type of person who gets into music or is it more of a lifestyle thing? Bit of both, no yeah. question. Because yeah. um, the introverts do end up yeah. you know, finding a fondness for certain substances, I guess. Oh, yeah, and also it's a hard job. Mm. The road's not for everyone. I mean, and the crew particularly, they're kind of like military. They're first in, last out. Yeah. So there's a natural penchant for things yeah. that can keep you up, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, because it's, you know, again, I guess I was lucky to have brothers and friends in the band, you know. But like... <laughs> Yeah, as I said, even though we didn't get into the have you in cuffs drugs, yeah. uh, grog, we like yeah. Irish uh, background, so the, yeah. we, we liked our grog. And one famous night in the days before responsible drinking, we're in a nightclub, speaking of nightclubs in Melbourne, and we had a huge job. Molly Meldrum was flying out the next night. We'd been on countdown. He literally went to the bar and said, these guys are on my card. It's like, whoa! Oh, Molly. <laughs> That's how he hooked in, right? You know, da, da, da. My brother John could not move, right? Yeah, yeah. And the roadies had tried to get into a – like there was a club next door. They tried to get in and they went, no, nah, mate, no, nah, whatever. They might have just been not well-dressed. Johnny could not move and they said, oh, we want to go to the place next door. So they carried him literally <laughs> like a boat on their shoulders, right, get to the door of the club and the guy went, no, nah, mate, you're not coming in. And he lift, they lifted his head and went, it's the guy from the cockroaches. And they went, yeah, okay. <laughs> so he was carried into a venue. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, like it's, you look for enjoyment, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, it's a bit different these days up the cross, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's yeah, they've killed yeah. it. The, yeah, the, yeah. the the developers, the government, everyone, and also, geez, you know, in 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 COVID and the rest of it, the industry that helps everyone out. Yeah. Think of bushfire relief, flood yeah. relief, yeah. anything going. Musos get together. Yeah, we're we're just being cast aside. Yeah. They don't care, and and yeah. yeah, and let alone they've shut every decent venue in Sydney. Yeah. We're going to be like bloody Singapore, you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. and and no one's speaking up for. For us, yeah. yeah, which is a pity because apart from a lot of things, we'll lose a lot of good crew. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a mate of mine in America posted something about they should give the vaccination distribution to rock and roll crews. You get a lanyard, you get it done over a weekend, a free beer, and a meet and greet with Fauci. You know? yeah. <laughs> bump in, bump out. Yeah. yeah, they get it bloody well done. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. They move pretty quick. Yeah. So from there, can you tell us? A lot of the, uh, you know, you, you end up going on to manage the Wiggles. Yeah. And I guess those skills we're talking about, bump in, bump out, probably yeah. worked very, you know, hand in hand with that kind of journey. A lot of the people that would be familiar with your later work weren't alive for the cockroaches. Yeah. yeah it was interesting. It was yeah. a progression. So when the Wiggles first started, and, mm. and I didn't manage them at first, I did a bunch of other things, but mm. we would have... I'll use the term, girls that used to come see the cockroaches, we had a young audience, yep. were now bringing their kids to see the yeah, Wiggles. Right. Yeah. And now, 30 years since, those kids are bringing their children. So yeah, it's right. a generational thing. But, so yeah, you're right. Three, it, three it, generations of uh, – it, it totally is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it is interesting in that regard because that's always what uh, the comics have done, right? Eddie Murphy – Adam Sandler. Yep. They do their raw, feral stuff when they oh, – literally, Eddie yeah. Murphy, raw, yeah. delirious – and then Daddy Daycare. Around the same time those young people are having kids, it kind yes. of creates a – well, I guess for him it was calculated. For you guys it just kind of worked perfectly without even 
thinking on it. Yeah, and, and you know, one of the great strengths, uh, the term used nowadays is authentic, you know, yeah, and yeah. the Wiggles were organically created yeah. and cracking the states, you know. And we had, you know, years of doing our own thing, but also when we first tried to break into the states, one of the big things, you know, they were saying, you sound too Australian. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And the Americans at that stage, remember Mad Max was dubbed, yeah, yeah. for God's sake, yeah. or yeah. subtitled yeah, yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know. So, and <laughs> we were, by, by the suits that know such things, they said, you know, you sound too Australian, blah, blah, blah. And we said, and again, I'm not early childhood trained, but Anthony was, I said, look, children, they're just starting putting sentences together. The Boston accent is profoundly different from the one in Tennessee. Yeah. Right? So what you're talking about doesn't relate to the children as long as they can be understood. So your brother, your brother made that call as an early childhood. Yeah, he, he told me about yeah. it. Yeah. And so I, I, I certainly said to them, try the video. T- yeah. Take it to the local preschools, play it, and then come back. And that's when they come back and went, wow. Really? And remember, at this same time when they were going, you're too Aussie, you know, da-da-da, you won't work here. Thomas the Tank Engine, which was massive yeah. show, was first hitting the States and the same thing, and they did. Yeah. They revoiced it with American voices. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the awful punchline, and I want to meet the dickhead who made this decision. <laughs> but they revoiced Ringo Starr, yeah. who was narrating Thomas the oh. So who sacked a beetle? Oh, I suppose uh, it'd be a bit hard for an American to hear like, like and then here comes Thomas down the track. <laughs> it's like, what's he saying? Yeah. But like, you know, like if it's like, here comes Thomas, you know, yeah. chugging along. They replaced what, it with Kid yeah. Rock. What, and, <laughs> and, and the joke is, once you start over there, they then spend a fortune to make them stand out from the rest. Yeah. yeah. Whereas we sounded different from the word yeah. go. Yeah, so, so yeah. you did have an edge that they yeah. would have had to spend money on anyway. Yeah, yeah. So can you tell us from the cockroaches, the DNA of the cockroaches, who ended up on that journey with you? So uh, the start, we started at school, in yeah, high school. Yeah. So it was myself, my br- two brothers, Johnny and Anthony, the drummer Tony Henry was at school with us, and then we picked up a bass player. And Jeff Fat, the uh, yeah, keyboard yeah. player for the Cockroaches, he and his brother Hilton used to run a PA business. And they were great, they were cheap, really efficient, mm-hmm. and they'd deliver to your gig and pick it up later. Mm-hmm. And For the millennials these- at home, this is wake up, Jeff, we're talking yes. about yeah, the yeah, moment. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so eventually, and I'm quite serious when I say this, apart from a few bucks that you'd make, we used to do a lot of uni balls where they'd yeah. feed you, yeah. right? And with very primal pe- beings. Yeah. And I just said to Jeff, he was playing in a rockabilly band at the time, I said, mate, join us. You get better fed, better bucks. Yeah. And that was it. Right. Jeff was in. <laughs> yeah, right. And then <laughs> was, it, was a similar decision made for the Wiggles? Was everyone thinking better bucks, better feed? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> Bigger no. markets? <laughs> yeah. No, there was none of that. Although yeah. if Anthony's in into anything, it's 100%. Yeah. And the cockroaches, we'd had this massive success, as I say, biggest pulling band at one stage, mm. the platinum album, gold album, had done it all. And then we had a family tragedy. So in 1988, when we were touring, actually, my daughter, uh, Bernadette, passed away from sudden infant death syndrome and yeah. it killed me, yeah. you know. Uh, I'll never get over that, you know. And it had a profound effect on the band like I imploded. We didn't want to tour. And at the same time, the industry changed. So, you know, you had pop radio like 2SM, 3XY and the equivalent around Australia where if it was a hit, they'd play you – pick a number 12 times a day. Yeah. It's bloody awesome for the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had Countdown. If you're on Countdown, mate, you're in every home in Australia. Yeah. So we rode that wave in yeah. and then it changed in 88 where FM radio kicked in. Yeah. And ironically, again, the same suits yeah. who probably made the decision about Thomas the Tank Engine, yeah. <laughs> same kind of thinking went, okay, FM radio, the cockroaches. And it's true we had a young female audience yeah. at the time. Okay, and even though we played more pubs than anyone, we were seen as a teen band, so we weren't going to get played on that. Yeah. Okay. So we kind of limped on, as I say, a, a, a wounded man and, yeah. and, you know, the band, and it became a bit of hard work. Yeah. And Anthony was kind of the canary down the mine and just went, it's not fun, yeah. so let's look to do other things. And he actually said, why don't we make an album of children's music? Because he had been studying yeah. it at, at uni, yeah. which at the time was like, mate, what are you talking about? <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, that is yeah. such a pivot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and so what happened, it's, it's like- and such and it's, unbroken ground. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and it was like, why don't we build a rocket ship? Seriously, yeah. right? Yeah. You know? yeah. and, and so he went off and did it himself, which was probably the best thing. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, whatever role I had and Johnny's role with musically. So he did it himself because he knew early childhood. Yeah. And so in 1991, it was interesting. The Crockage was still going, kind of just limping on. I formed a rockabilly band, which- 
contained most of the cockroaches, by the way, Anthony and Jeff yeah, were in it, da, yeah. da, da. and he started The Wiggles, which was literally the first album he did to help him get a job as a preschool teacher, right. which he did. And then he thought, Gee, you know what, I should actually, I've, we've had this success, yeah. I should take it to the ABC. And again, the universe, because in all success you need a bit of luck. Yeah. There's a woman called Meryl Gross who her first week in the job at ABC, she'd been at Festival Records where the cockroaches had been. And they took the tape in with this kind of, you know, like a uni project. Here's the reason why these songs work. Yeah, yeah. And she went, you know what? There's nothing like them. I've had success with the cockroaches, even though it wasn't the whole band. And I had a few good nights out listening to you blokes too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 100%. And she, she signed them. In her first week, she signed The Wiggles and Lee Kernigan. Yeah, right. Two okay. of the biggest selling yeah. acts of all time. So she had a good week. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. One yeah. that's paid off in the long run there. Yeah. I'm interested to hear what the press was like, you know, in those transitional years. Like a lot of the fans of The Wiggles probably went yeah. around from a lot of people that they were seeing, you, you know, this big successful band kind of put things on hold and kind of atrophy and come out the other side as, as a children's band. Like what was the press around, you, you know, in those early days? Did they think you'd partied a bit too hard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was, I, I guess purely because for the first few years, they are off the radar, yeah. right? And having been in a band where you are lied to and ripped off Yep. By agents who that's what they do. They're yeah. just a lot of them, I should say. Yeah. I can't gen, you know, generalize. Yes, I can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where, you know, they double dip and there's blah, blah, yeah. blah. So no one thought there was anything worthy of it. And in yeah. fact, the Wiggles first went to meet with a theatrical agent and they said, Look, this is what we do. Here's some of the songs, real show and tell. And she went, Look, that's great, but I got to tell you, there'll be no money in it for me and no money in it for you. Yep. So no one believed in them at first. Yeah, yeah. So they just started their own thing and they play preschools and again for those who have got little kids fundraisers at preschool you put a cake stall or a fake it's a huge amount of effort yeah. right? we went to the preschools and nursing mothers association said look we'll come along and play yeah. you sell the tickets say five bucks a ticket you take a buck out of each ticket yeah. that's it they do it. It's like, God, that was good. Yeah. God, that was easy money. And it grew from there. So we're off the radar, away from the agent started of that. Yeah. So you're at the, the, when the big, you, you came along a bit after they got the ball rolling. But yes. at what point was the decision made to keep the Wiggles as something you, you all own? It, it just naturally grew and grew because, to where. Because those suits weren't coming in at that point. Is that yeah, why? Yeah, no one believed in them. Yeah, no right. one understood it. Now you can yeah. say, you know, like the Wiggles. Then yeah. it was like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they were doing huge live business, et cetera. And, and, and here's a real tangent, you know, off. But in those years, while I, I still work with them, I'm literally would dress, be in some of the suits, yeah. provide pirate, the kids for the a bit of pirate mate. Action, I was yeah. I was every character. <laughs> 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 I clearly worked cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, I worked at the Supreme Court for a judge for three years. I worked in the investigation team at the Royal Commission of the Police Service for three years. And by that stage, the Wiggles had really set themselves up as a big touring act. Yeah. And I'd finished at the commission, and then Anthony went, "Can you manage us?" And the good thing there is the biggest thing I had going for me was a shared experience yep. of being ripped off and blah, blah, yep. blah. And also trust was yeah. the big one. Oh, you trust brother. me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so the Wiggles office when, we, when I first started was three people, including me. Yeah. And I booked their gigs. I eventually produced and directed their videos and TV. And it grew organically, but it was a good time to join. Yeah. And because of that experience and paralegal experience and all the rest of it, you know, I, I think from the word go – I believed in what they did. They were bloody good. They yeah. were, no one liked them. They had yeah. good songs. And so I had that enthusiasm from the word go. And you could call a bluff at that point too. You, yes. You're just sick and tired of the uh, – what was the most ridiculous <laughs> offer? We, we spoke to Hamish, yeah. and, Hamish Blake about this, Hamish and Andy, and he tells stories of being invited into boardrooms yeah. and someone going, so what do you want to do? And him being like – Hey, you invited us in here, mate. Yeah, we don't oh, yeah. know any. And then, like, just the dodgy contracts that get put in front of you. And uh, but by that stage, and again, ten years of the cockroach is an invaluable education, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, so uh, I uh, we all had the thing. If it's a legal question, get a lawyer. Yeah. If it's commercial consumer products, get an expert in that. So yeah. well, good. We saved a lot of bucks, even though that cost you initially. Yeah. We weren't going to get ripped off like that. However, in those non-belief, no one knew what we're doing, no one believed in us yeah. era, we had a meeting with the ABC kind of at gunpoint, is in mm. by 95, we were their, uh, on mid-90s, yeah, we were their biggest selling act on video and music. So someone said, this is ridiculous. We should, you know, we should do something with them. But the 
those some of the people or whatever in TV, if it wasn't their creation, then they didn't want to know yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they had a meeting, you know, in The Godfather, they talk about an offer you can't refuse. This was an offer we couldn't accept, where yeah. they literally sat around. One of them had a, an inflatable ball, I don't know why, was spinning that and go, okay, so tell me, what do you do? <laughs> Uh, what do you do? It's like, oh, really? Yeah. And here's a great statement as well. At that same meeting, one of them said, "Look, I've I've heard your music, and you know, not all of it's good. You know, um, <laughs> again, insult after insult." And then here's here's the great statement: three of the four were early childhood trained, yeah. had been preschool teachers, were the biggest selling act in preschool, let alone most genres. And this great quote: this guy said. I don't think you communicate well with children. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. they said, here's the offer. Yeah, And again, to their credit, they said, yeah, okay, we'll give it a go. We'll make some film clips with you, but you won't talk, right? You'll just do the songs, right? And so again, to their credit, and so immediately the guys had a bit of a uniform that was kind of past experience with what it works, you know, identifying it, you know, so their colour, uh, different shirts at this stage and long black pants, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. The first thing they did was change it. So they, suddenly the wiggles are into shorts, they're wearing caps, <laughs> like kids that hadn't grown up. I don't know, it was weird, <laughs> right? Yeah. And we're making this clip. And I think it was for, it was for hot potato, and someone with the clipboard came around. Okay, the fire engine's coming in about half an hour, so we'll get you guys to wait. And they went, "What's the fire engine for?" And and they went, "Oh, you know, kids love fire engines, so there's got to be a fire yeah. engine in the clip." I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> so one of my first jobs in management was nuking that clip yeah. and yeah. saying, "This shall never be played." It was a great experience because <laughs> from that we went, "You know what? Trust ourselves. We yeah. know what yeah. we're doing." Yeah. And that was a big lesson for not. And then the uh, the fire engine got appropriated <laughs> into the big red car. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was heavily inspired by the monkeys. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay. kids of the 60s. So yeah. they left you with nothing. The yeah, 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 yeah. But it was good, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. No, I was just almost laughing then that, you know, the spinning the ball and everything like that. But um, Hamish and Andy, referencing Hamish Blake before, he said they got that same treatment with uh, Triple J Breakfast. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like going with a commercial radio station is the stupidest thing you could ever do. Don't ever do that. And yes. they're like... We're just going to go with our gut here. Yeah. <laughs> and they were, they were like, if you turn down Triple J, you'll be back working in a bank in two months. I guarantee it. Yeah. Mm, the money's still pretty good. We're going to go this way. Well, and that, and that, that was a lesson from us. Experts cannot be trusted, really. Yeah. Because yeah. they're paid yeah. to give an opinion. Yeah. And you know, with mates of ours from the mentals and, and, you know, the chisel and other things where they've been given advice that was totally wrong from yeah. people who didn't know what they're on yeah, about. Yeah. And same thing in the early days. And again, to the Wiggles' credit, you know, I was far more, forget that, you know, but they were always, oh, well, let's see. They might yeah. know what they're talking about. Yeah. And uh, there was an expert who produced some of the biggest children selling acts on TV who had a look at us and said, I kid you not, lose the dinosaur, Dorothy. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of like someone summoned a walk, lose the mouse, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after those experiences, that we went, okay, we don't need, just stick to what we know. Yeah. yeah. About a year ago, we spoke to uh, some boys from a pop band, what were they call you? And, um, the Five Four Seconds, seconds of Summer. summer. Oh, yeah, yeah, huge, yeah. huge. And, um, and we're speaking to one of the blokes in the band, and uh, and this is after they just come back from doing like 10 back to back big things like. Um, they did at Wembley. Yeah. Like, wow. And they did. <laughs> Opening well, for like, One Direction or one yeah, of them, but they yeah, still yeah. were Wembley. And they had like 100,000 there, and they. Um, Pre COVID. <laughs> And we asked him, it's like, oh, so what's your goal for next year? And, and this guy's like, oh, I'd just like to be able to, you know, to buy my mum an apartment or something or, yeah. or or a house. It's like, mate, what fucking contract did you sign? <laughs> no, no, you're no, three no. albums like, in, mate. Like, yeah. you've sold 17 million records. Yeah, he, wants to buy his mom, he wanted to buy his mum a flat in Windsor. Yeah. I said, what's yeah. going on here, fellas? Yeah, well... <laughs> And again, yeah. uh, the bands from that era, yeah. you know, uh, actually even to this day, that's very true, which is why not many people get legal advice, but because yeah. we'd had the experience with the cockroaches from the word go, that's what we did. And, and you're right, Peter Garrett, many years ago, we were at a wedding once and the cockroaches had big hits at this stage and blah, blah, blah. And he came up, I don't know what prompted him, but it was, it was I've never forgotten. He said, guys, the biggest strength a band can have is the ability to say no. Yeah. I went, wow. Yeah, right. And it's very true. Mm. And so we have a few times, yeah. personally, with Wiggles, with the cockroaches and whatever, occasionally thinking, oh, God, there will never be another opportunity, and there is. Yeah. yeah. 
Don't anyway. sign, don't sign that five album contract because <laughs> just because it felt <laughs> sweet to yeah. be to be in like business class. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, you and get- Moving Pictures who were massive in Australia and they signed a big American deal and everyone's like, wow, wow, wow. And American companies and Americans can be like this sometimes, just ruthless. Where they got to the stage where they kind of shelved them and went. We're not going to release your album, but we don't want anyone else to. And they had to break up. Really? Yeah. So lots of stories like that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, a lot of horror stories. I mean, the, the one thing that everyone's always said about the Wiggles is that they were able to own it from the start and keep it in-house. Yeah. Which it's a it's a success story in, in terms of the audience and what it's done and, you know, the the stories and experiences that every young people in Australia and America yeah. have experienced off the back of the Wiggles, but also it's it's a success story in the, in the sense of you look at people like independent bands or you look at someone like Billy Birmingham. He owned his own shit from the start. Yes. And, and you've got that kind of narrative as well in the yeah. story. Yeah, very much. And, and again, for that reason, mm. no one believed in them, mm. yeah. right? And and so we made our own TV. Yeah. And, you know, with the bucks we made from live, reinvested it and own Everything, I I stopped saying we because I've retired, but uh, (laughs) they've made, and not even the Beatles own their own stuff. You know what I mean? So Uh, it's owned by Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's oldest daughter. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Paris Jackson owns. Uh, the entire Beatles catalog. Yeah. It's just, yeah, kind of like your real estate agent agent saying, um, I'm not selling your house, I now own it. And and I think, um, like, EMI owns all of Bob Dylan now. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His entire back catalogue. Which, if he chose to sell it, no worries. David yeah. Bowie did that, oh, actually, no, for that yeah. reason. Cash yeah. him while you can. Good yeah. on him. He did. He was like, I'm 80 and I'd like to have $400 million. Yeah. So I guess. <laughs> Leave that for my rap star son. <laughs> <laughs> Grandson. <laughs> well, and, and same with the Wiggles. That whole thing of when we're working with other people, they eventually, like I'm an example of it, work with people you get on with, you can trust and the rest of it. And in the early days, particularly with crew, mm. it's a bit of snobbery because yep. what we're making was children's yep. stuff. I imagine that was, oh, a, mate. you know, that's not real rock and roll. It's like, well, it's fun and it certainly pays better than whatever yeah. the fuck's going on the pub down the road, boys. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. what about, but, but like the crew, production crew, post-production thing, where yeah. they'd have this, whereas ironically enough, and I'll stop selling them yeah. in a moment but it's the preschool audience is the most honest audience yeah. right if they don't dig you they walk yeah. right whereas <laughs> as adults if you've bought the ticket you've paid for parking you've gone to the restaurant got the babysitter you're ready to enjoy it yeah yeah, yeah right okay yeah, you know, yeah so anyway they can uh, walk away from it yeah they'll walk yeah. up to mum and say yeah let's get the car going oh, like, yeah, bring the just, car around the front yeah, yeah so it, it's funny and then that's why for decades they've used a lot of the same people because who respect what they do yeah. who are good to work with and we, we did a movie with 20th Century Fox in the late 90s and we had someone working with us fairly senior position in the movie and we'd never done a movie before who after a day we went you know what see you mate yep. just yelling at people and stuff we don't need that yeah right right you know, yeah, this so, is, yeah. when, when did the penny drop that we've made an incredibly good decision to go down this path <laughs> Oh, I probably it certainly once they started selling out, where they were part of ABC shows, where yeah, they yeah, have yeah. Mm. You know, a, a number of acts, and then you go, they're all here for us. Yeah, that was the oh wow, and okay. then we do our own tour. Everything just was step Start by getting step. Getting those Carol and Domains, yes, and it's a, yes. All of a sudden, you've got the domain to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah those moments where you just realise, and yeah. then again, same with the states where they literally started off at a blockbuster video uh, store. Mm-hmm. with more PR people than the actual audience, mm-hmm. supporting Captain Kangaroo at SeaWorld, right, and then doing our own shows at small theatres and churchills that I booked mm-hmm. with others over there, and then Disney. Yeah. We'd had success with them here, and they came to us and said, we'd like you to write the theme song for our new channel. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And before online existed, they were huge. They play our show four times a day, and we went from that to – the biggest, one of the biggest touring acts in yeah. the states and yeah. the world, you know. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, Disney when that dropped, that was another yeah. level of pennies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was when the hammer dropped. <laughs> Four. <laughs> uh, but the you know the rock dog lives on, and you uh, particularly yeah. There's been cockroaches reunions over the years. We did a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I got our catalog back 
and wanted to re-release it, yeah. you know, because you couldn't get it anywhere. Yeah. And I said to everyone, eh, let's have a reunion show. <laughs> and particularly Anthony and Jeff at that stage, you were doing like 300 and something shows a year. Yeah. So we went, really? We're going to do a gig? <laughs> but they actually did enjoy the process. We did like do IRSL, Rudy Hill RSL, yeah. did a Brizzy, Brizzy gig and whatever. And it actually was fun. And yeah, they enjoyed yeah. it, you know, and whatever. And so I did that. And, and, and I was still playing a rockabilly band, the rest of it. But just before COVID kicked, and I don't know if this is the universe talking or what, but that's when I, I decided, you know, I'm nearly 60. Uh, it's time to I've, – yeah. I've, I've done my job, you know, yeah. with the Wiggles. I'd, every time we had a, a, a lineup change, it was like starting again. Yeah. We nearly went out of business at the start of the last iteration change. Seriously, yeah. ch- challenges. But we relaunched 30 million CDs and DVDs, sold 8 million books, broadcast in 190 countries. <laughs> They got the secret sauce, these fellas. Yeah. (laughs) Well, uh, mission accomplished, you know what I mean? And and particularly with the latest iteration, they were on their way again. And and I just thought, and also the natural evolution, they're all creative types. More and more, uh, I said from before where I produced and directed everything, blah, blah, blah. They do more and more and more themselves, even internally. So it was like, okay, I can still sell them and the rest of it, but if I'm going to make a change, it's now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was good, you know, and then COVID hit. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Great idea, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and But I was lucky. And, and, and funny enough, yeah. Jim, Jimmy Barnes is a great friend. And, and, you know, from way back in the days, he I mentioned my daughter passing away. He, we did a – not much was known about SIDS way back then. And I did a, an awareness and fundraising concert. And he was the first guy to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like that. He's just yeah. a decent bloke. and. Yeah. Lovely, lovely, lovely man. And he's also lost a few friends along the way. So when he asks how you're going, he actually doesn't let you go, yeah, no worries. Yeah, but how are you? Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. And then so yeah, I told yeah. him how I'd left the wig. He went, what? Yeah. Right, you know. Yeah. So what are you doing? And I said, actually, you know, no one was doing anything. Yeah. But he went, you need to get creative. He said, yeah. you bloody love music. Do that. And I went, yeah, I was thinking. And then he just – just help me. And yeah. and so this album started putting together and he said, come to my studio, right? It was like kids in a sandpit. We just had the best fun. Yeah, and yeah. all the friends I've made over the years in music, like Casey Chambers, Jimmy Barnes and others, I just, you know, asked them, do you want to join in on this? And I did a lot of my favourite songs of all time. And music is an indulgence, you know. Mm-hmm. And then Jimmy actually said, write some originals as well with your brother. You know, I went, yeah, okay, good idea. So that's how it came about. Yeah. And, and so this that, is Love yeah. Songs for Lonely People? Yeah. This is this is the solo? Yeah. All right. <laughs> and you've got all the you've yeah. got all these friends on board. You've got Casey, yeah, you've got Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. This it's, is a- it's, it's, it's a blast. And it, actually, uh, you can't be mates with him and not have great stories, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Two of the big things during COVID, he said, okay, when, this, when we can get together – we're going to have a get together, yeah. right? And I'm from a big family. We have wild parties. His are the best, yeah. right? Yeah. Jane is the best cook in the country, yeah. right? Yeah. And even though he's he's very much straight down the line nowadays, yeah. you can still tie one on, yeah. right? As I'd imagine. And so the first get together we had, a pioneer of it, in fact. <laughs> yes. No, seriously. And yeah. uh, there, I, I I just uh, overindulged, right? And I literally at, towards the end of the night, there's a fireplace, a little table which a cat could fit under, and there was a lamb's wool rug under that, yeah. and that was calling me. So I slept under this occasionally, and I'll do an act, you know, Paul, you're there. You're still breathing, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mate, yeah mate. <laughs> And to this day, it is the best sleep I've ever had in my life. <laughs> so much so in the melodramatic field way, I had a plaque made up, and it's under that table. So, right. yeah. so the next uh, survivor of his thing, had. look at there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so he's left it there, thankfully. The other thing is my brother John, who co-produced this album, and so on, he does a lot of gigs, like mainly functions, corporate things, weddings, all that kind of stuff, because their band's awesome, right? They've yeah. done a lot of country stuff and whatever. And we were talking about this the other day, and he was saying, uh, just because you get requests, and it's like, kind of, we do what we do, but sure, you know. Yeah. Whatever. And oftentimes you have to say, like, I don't know that song or whatever else. Yeah. And he said, because Australia loves Chisel and Jimmy, yeah. right, you know. So he said, I get asked to do Chisel songs all the time. Yeah. And he said, Jimmy's got like an eight octave voice, right, yeah. the best singer on the planet, right. And he said, I, I just won't do it right. So I got Jimmy to record on video. Yeah. 
uh, as Jimmy Barnes, I don't want John Field doing my songs, all right? Yeah. He can get his own. And he said, so at gigs when they ask him, he plays the video on his phone and they go, yeah! They play <laughs> so he's a good man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Troy, Troy Casadale was saying the same thing. I said, yes. oh, similar story to you. Just yes. Jimmy kind of gave him a kick up the ass and said, I like yes. your writing and, and, and get the ball rolling. And There you go. And I guess that's kind of happened with a lot of people over the years. Uh, you know, I guess you're all friends. That's that's it. That's the thing at the end of the day, isn't it? It is, but and and you know, our paths cross. But it's funny. In the last five years or so, we've mm. worked together on a couple of things, and mm. I got to know him really well. And it's the same guy. Mm. He was always hard of gold, lovely bloke, but just he had a different lifestyle, you know, and yeah. one that would, would have killed him really if he didn't. Yeah. Now he's an elder of the whole thing. He's an elder, and yeah. also yeah. he's got so much more time where he's awake. Yeah. It's from his mouth, right? Yeah. And he that's the way he just keeps busy and doing things. And they're all great. Yeah. yeah. So he's a, he's a great example. And you're right, we all kind of lose confidence. Oh, geez, should I do this? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, why not? And why not? We'll uh, we'll be we'll be right across this when it comes out, Paul. Thank you. Um thank you for joining us today. Love songs for lonely people. Get it at all good CD stores online. <laughs> yeah, this is one you've actually got to buy in a physical format. Yeah. And it will be on vinyl yeah. too. All right, on vinyl. vinyl, yeah. Okay. It'll be in a little while, but it'll come out. Yeah. Put it on the boat, put it on, on the boat, put it on, on the car, put it on at the beach house. Um, <laughs> yeah, get a couple, get a copy for each. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Paul Thanks. Field, what a yarn. <laughs>